Lake Bear Nation, welcome back to the homestead. So I'm sure you're wondering what this beautiful dessert is that we have right here. What is this? It's king cake. It's called king cake. It's a big tradition around Mardi Gras, and today is Mardi Gras, and we're having a Bible study this evening, and our theme was that, so we offered to make king cake. Um, so we're going to show you how we made this, and hopefully you'll be encouraged to try and make your own. First step is to read the instructions. You gonna tell me what all we need here? Okay, so the first thing I know that we're going to need is a standing mixer, but that'll come into play in just a minute. The very first thing I know that we're gonna do is we have to take milk and butter and melt it up and everything. So what's the measurements on that? You need to heat up one cup of milk. One cup of milk. And a fourth of a cup of salted butter. Okay, so we got one cup of milk. One cup of milk. And then you said a quarter of a cup? Yes. So we make our own butter and we use a silicone cupcake or muffin pan mm -hmm. to do them. So each one of these measures out to about a quarter of a cup. So I'm just gonna pop one of these out, put it in there, and then we're gonna go ahead and put that on the stove and get it heated up. Okay, now that we have the milk and the butter melted and staying, we're gonna try and bring it kind of back up to room temperature, cool off a little bit. In the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're going to start proofing our yeast. So what does it say we need to do? You Combine two-thirds of a cup of water. Okay. And two-thirds of a cup of water. And how much sugar? Uh, one tablespoon as well. Okay. So I would put that so in. So we got one tablespoon of sugar. <laughs> okay. And now we need one tablespoon of yeast. We need a full tablespoon. I imagine that's almost a packet. Is it a full packet? Fun fact, full packet is about a tablespoon. tablespoon. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that. We're gonna set the timer for five minutes and we're going to let it proof. Okay, so it's been about seven-ish minutes. Um, the directions say anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Uh, and so it's been about seven or so and it's nice and um, foamy which is what we're looking for. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the butter, butter and milk, milk mixture, which by the way, we oopsed a little. Um, we were supposed to add a teaspoon and a half of salt, which we did we off did. camera. Just make sure that you add that in before you do this next part. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pour that mixture in. What's next? Sugar? Uh, sugar? Yes. So the sugar measurement is a half a cup minus that tablespoon, tablespoon. that you needed for the, the yeast. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Okay. And then you are going to need two large eggs. Two large eggs. It Let me tell you. Beating. Beaten? Yeah, yeah, beaten. Oh, so we're going to have to beat them first. Okay. So we're fortunate we have duck yes. eggs. So I'm really, really excited about using these because I always hear people talk about how great it is to use duck eggs when they're baking. So, okay, so we have two duck eggs. We beat those up real good. And now we're going to add that to the mixture. What else do we need? Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Okay. And then one. Two. The next thing is one cup of flour. Now we're going to use more flour in the recipe, but we have to start with the one cup. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there and it says we're going to need to mix well all right so before we get going with the dough hook i'm going to go ahead and give it a nice little that's a technical term with the whisk before we start um with the dough hook i wanted to kind of make sure that we got it all kind of mixed together 
Okay, so we've hooked up the mixing bowl to the standing mixer. I'm going to go ahead and attach the dough hook. Get that set up, and then we'll do the head. Now we're going to go ahead and stir this, or turn this on. It's going to get a little loud. Okay, so we're going to add four additional cups of all-purpose flour. And I don't think I covered that earlier, is that this is all-purpose flour. All right, so it says one cup at a time. So we're going to... because it was still really tacky oh, yeah. in the bowl, right? It was, it was questionable. It was a little questionable. So we're gonna just pop it out on the... What are you, there you doing go. here, girl? So it says now we have to knead it for five about minutes. five minutes. While we're doing that, I wanted to tell you, on this recipe, this recipe actually makes two king cakes. So we're going to have double the fun. Okay, so you kneaded it for five minutes. Five minutes. And then it says to... Roll it into a ball. Roll it into a ball. And then put it in a oiled bowl and cover it. We're going to cover it and let it rise. Sit for an hour to two hours. Or until, until it it's doubles double inside. inside. Okay, so next step while we're waiting on the dough to rise is to go ahead and prepare the icing. So we need two cups of powdered sugar, one packet of eight ounces of cream cheese. We're gonna need butter and vanilla. Wait, let's get the cream cheese and stuff done first. Yes, I'm gonna do the cream cheese first. You made them. So Ooh. we've left this out most of the day so that it would soften. Makes it a lot easier to mix. Um, this filling is really kind of like a typical filling. Like I think this is pretty much the same recipe that I use in my pumpkin roll. Mm -hmm. So um, it's fairly easy. So we've got the eight ounces of cream cheese. We have two tablespoons of softened butter. Two cups, which I mean you can't argue with this. Like it's this very is a practical. two cup measuring cup. Like pretty practical, cool idea. So we're gonna put that in there, and then you need one teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla, Ella. Vanilla, Ella, Ella. So we're just gonna mix that all together and that will be our filling that goes inside the king cake. Okay, so our dough has definitely doubled <laughs> in size. This is my favorite part. Oh, you like this part? So what you're gonna wanna do is just very calm, cool, and collectively. <laughs> you didn't warn me about that. <laughs> I knew about what? You just punched the dough. Yeah, and then you just roll it out. Roll it out, okay. That's where having that oil on there made very helpful. a very big difference. Oh, Once the dough has doubled in size, punch it down and divide in half. Remember this recipe, blah, 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 blah. Roll out. Oh, you're supposed to do that when you cut it to the squares. <laughs> the rest of the rectangles. Okay, you're good. Because this makes two 
Two king loaves. King loaves. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to work it into a rectangle. Mm -hmm. 10 by 16. Somebody go get my mirroring tape. <laughs> Your mirroring tape? Measuring tape. Oh, okay. Okay, so we rolled the dough out to roughly yeah, a 16 this, by... I love, I love this beat talk. I, I did a little bit of it. So 16 by... 10? 10. Mm -hmm. And so now we have to cut it in half long ways so that we can make the two braids. Do you think you can... No. Do you need me to like... <laughs> no. Let me just put a if, line in the I, middle. There you go. Stop breathing so heavy. The pressure. The pressure to draw a straight line. <laughs> okay, so now the next step is to take the filling and we're going to put it in both of these and then we have to pinch them and roll them. And roll them. So now Comes we're going part. to do is a rope braid, right? Yes. You can kind of lengthen this out a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. It'll okay. It should just go pretty easily. Now the way that you do this is you pinch these two ends together over. Probably should have laid a little bit more flour down. Oh, no, that's good. I don't know if these are supposed to be tighter with this kind of thing. Just about like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, over and under. Over and under. Okay, so we put the king cakes into the oven at 350. We cooked them for about 25 minutes. And now they're ready. The first one's already come out. And then this is the second one. It turned out beautiful. Look at that. It really got a lot bigger. I was worried about it when we put it in the oven, but it definitely, it's got a nice crust to it. And the flavor is fantastic. Now, this is just part of what you have to do for the king cake. The next part is where it gets really fun. We get to make the icing, put it on there, put the colored sprinkles on. But we also have to hide something in it before we do all that. Okay, so part of the tradition of a king cake for Mardi Gras or Carnival, whatever, um, is you hide a baby in the cake. Not a real baby, a plastic baby. And since obviously we couldn't find a plastic baby to put in the cake, we had to improvise. So I found a little He-Man dude and we found him at the Dollar, Dollar Tree. And uh, now we're going to hide him in the cake. And then when I, what I told you about earlier about the icing and everything, we will hide the spot where we put him. And we're not going to tell anybody where he is because part of the tradition is when you serve the king cake, everybody gets a slice and whoever has the baby, or in this case, He-Man, they have to make the next one and have a party and everybody come over and eat another king cake and so on and so forth. So, so now we're going to hide He-Man and we'll call it a night. We'll ice it tomorrow. I'll bring you along for that. <laughs> okay, so that was actually a little bit easier than I anticipated. Um, because you're doing that rope weave, um, it leaves these nice little seams. So you just have to pick a seam and slide them in there. Okay, so now it's time to make the icing. We're going to need two cups of powdered sugar. All right. Three tablespoons of milk, which you already measured out for us, right? Okay. And then we need one tablespoon of butter. Melted butter. Melted. Okay. 
And then what's the other thing? You need some... Just a ploop. <laughs> Just a ploop? Is that a technical term? Very technical. What did it say? It says a teaspoon. Yeah, ploop. <laughs> I said you're not going to measure it. You never I think a cup. I think a cat full is a teaspoon. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Okay. Now it says that it's supposed to be what? It's supposed to be kind of thick, right? It's supposed to be pourable, but it's still thick. Thick. We made the icing, but I wasn't really like comfortable with the te the texture that it was. The directions say you're supposed to be able to drizzle it and then spread it all over. And I didn't, it was, it was really, really thick. It's supposed to be pourable. So what we did is we just set up kind of like a double boiler kind of situation. Um, and so now the icing to me is a little bit better, you know, texture of what it needs to be. So I've got a pastry brush and we've got the icing. <laughs> icing spread all over the place and now you're going to decorate so I'm gonna take the purple first it's okay it's whoa just kidding that was almost a bad day <laughs> it's, it's okay so not the prettiest things in the world. <laughs> I've seen prettier. <laughs> but. Like me. Um, but they're definitely, they were fun to make. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to be even more fun to share. Let's get, I just got. And eat. So, we're going to let these sit. Let the icing kind of harden because it kind of, you know, that's why we put the icing on. Then put the sprinkles, sprinkles. on there. So, in that way. It'll all kind of dry together, and this evening we'll be sharing them with all of our friends in our Bible study, so I'm excited about it. Are you? Yeah, I'm terrified. <laughs> now, if you liked this video, I know it's a little bit different than what we normally do, um, go ahead and check out this video over here, <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for stopping by the Big Bear Homestead. God bless. And have a nice day.